welcome to another episode of Jim's Allotment Garden. Okay, so it's time to sort out the uh, this border in the greenhouse. Now, basically, every year what I do is um, the the actual border is made up of the bottom. I leave some soil in the bottom, and then I put in probably about four or five inches of um, grass cuttings. And what that actually does is, as it decays, um, it gives off a lot of heat, so it keeps the uh, the bed really warm. It's an old Victorian trick. Then on top of that, I put um, some chicken manure and then I then I'll put um, soil on top of that so I'll end up with a layer sort of about here now if you can see the soil level is about kind of here at the moment and, and what I've already taken off the top layer that was there last year um, because of um, you know the sort of any uh, any bug sort of that you, that you got off the plants last year now you will get things like blight and stuff like that which I got in the greenhouse last year um, so what I did is I took off carefully took off the top layer of um, soil and I've sort of put that back on the allotment out, um, out the, uh, at the top where there's no potatoes or anything so that's already gone so what I basically need to do is clear all of this stuff out um, and then what I want to do is take all of these benches off and then move all of the earth from this half over to that half and then basically so I'll end up with a hole here um, in, the, in the earth and then what I'll do is I'll put in the um, put in the grass cuttings and then um, some chicken manure on top of that and then I'll transfer all of the earth on top of all of that so it'll probably be up here and then I'll do exactly the same on here so what I'll end up with just to quickly reiterate is that the some earth at the bottom and then about four or five inches of um, grass cuttings then some chicken manure and then the soil um, and then basically what I'll do is I'll mix the top in with the uh, the chicken manure a little bit just to just to sort of mix it all up and then I'll be ready to plant all of the all of the tomatoes um, into this border and the cucumbers at the back and as you can see the tomatoes are more than ready to go in so that's why I'm doing it today so I'll get cracking with that and I'll show you each stage as I, as I go through okay so that's the border emptied so what I'll do now is empty from sort of halfway um, all of the soil from there over on top of there and I'll just um, what I'll need to do is what I did last year is fill as much of it over there as I can and it starts to kind of overspill if you can imagine so what I'll do then is fill some trugs and just put the trugs on top and um, sort of do it that way but basically I need to move all of that earth from there up to kind of that line there over to there so I'll do that now. Okay so that's the first half done as you can see I've moved the earth over from here over and I've piled it so I've just put those um, sort of wooden things around the back there just to protect the glass a little bit but as you can see this is this is only a couple of inches deep and that's straight onto concrete under this. These, these slabs go all the way underneath here so that's basically onto concrete. So all I've done is I've left a couple of, as you can see, under the, that's basically the concrete there. Um, so I've just left sort of two or three inches of um, dirt on there. Um, and then what I'll do now is I'll put the grass onto there um, and then I'll show you where we are then. Now I've just had all of this grass off the pond, I don't know if you can see it, it's actually steaming. I don't know if you can see that, can you see the steam rising off? It gets that up. Now this, this grass, don't be frightened about, uh, you know, you can see the steam now, look. Um, don't be um, frightened to put um, a reasonable amount of this in. Um, I've probably got, uh, probably about a barrel full, you know, the, the big barrel here, so there's probably about a hundred and, I think that's a hundred and twenty litre barrel and that was full to the top. Um, so I've put a whole one of them in, so that's sort of, if you imagine the level's kind of up to about there, so that's probably about six inches, but obviously as soon as I put the muck on top of that um, and then put the earth back on, the the um, the weight of the earth is going to push it all down, so this is going to sort of go down to probably about about five inches or so, so that's more than enough that I've got in there, but I'd say you can't, as you can see, you can see how this is really hot, can you see the steam? 
this is sort of that deep. There's the there's the bottom there. So we're uh, plenty of that in. Give it a good mix around so uh, so the bacteria that's in there is um, all mixed up with the rest of it. And um, as you can as you can see, that's the kind of level that you want. So I'll just kind of level all that off with the uh, the fork. And then I'll uh, put some chicken muck on top of that, and then I'll return the earth on there. So I'll I'll I'll, I'll show you the next step anyway. But what I'm going to do now is put about sort of four inches of um, chicken muck on top of there. Okay, so there's the chicken manure on there, and basically I've uh, this is reasonably sort of light, so if it's not salty to rot down, so it's quite strawy really. But uh, that was another barrel full of that. So now that's kind of works out. We're kind of here at the minute, so there's about four inches or so of uh, chicken muck. That's gone on. Now what I'll do is transfer all of this earth now on top of here, and obviously this will compress down. So um, this is going to go down to something like oh, that's going to drop to something like that, I'd imagine. So we're going to be about here on the side. So it's going to end up being in total about six inches off the ground. Okay, so now I've put half or just a bit less than half of the earth back back over on the top. Now this is where being a a 14 stone midget really comes in handy but what you need to do now is basically walk on all of this to compact it down because it's as you can see it's quite quite sort of spongy so what I tend to do is just get your get your foot in and try and as I say it, abs it helps if you're a midget to do this but uh, what you want to do is try and put as much as your weight in on your heel as possible and try and just compact the ground down and try and get all of the air out um, because what you don't want is when you after you've planted all of your plants in here, you don't want the le uh, the level of the soil to drop too much because it'll potentially you'll start to put strain on the plants with the string. So I'm just actually doing it as I speak to you. So basically, what I'm doing now is just kind of bending over and just giving it a really good try and try and put your weight on your heels basically and try and squ squash it down as much as you can. Um, now what I've done is I've already done this one, so I've put on about about a foot or so of the soil. Um, and then I uh, put some more on and do it again. Okay, so same again on the other side. You can just I'll just do that. You can see the the steam coming off. It's actually making all of the the windows um, sort of steam up at the top. So again, another barrel, so sort of 120 litres or so of um, um, grass cuttings have gone in there. And what I'll do, I'll, I've just left kind of six inches of uh, uh, sorry a couple of inches of soil at the bottom so what I'll do is now that's on top there that's going to be about six inches I'll just quickly sort of level all that off put some muck on there and then I'll be putting all of this soil um, sort of back on top and obviously leveling it all off um, the one thing um, that it's, it's, it's worth mentioning at the moment uh, is if if you're wondering how big these uh, beds are these are made out of like scaffolding type pole um, um, planks so they're around uh, about an inch a inch and a quarter, inch and a half wide. Um, they're lined with plastic, as you can see, the plastic going around the edge here, um, and that's kind of stapled in at the top. Then I've just got a bit of wood around the top just to protect that, and then that goes down and then comes under. So if I sort of fetch the soil out, the the plastic goes right the way down into the bottom. The plastic's there just to protect the wood to stop the wood from rotting. Measurement wise, this bed is ten foot long, um, and it's um, three foot three foot wide. Um, and it's around something like um, 18 inches deep in total. So into a into a 10 foot by 3 foot um, by sort of 18 inches high bed, I've put um, sort of 200 and 240 litres of um, grass, which is basically um, two um, big barrelfuls, if you like, and that's going to be about 60. So what I'm going to do now is spread all that out and mix it in with the soil a little bit so the worms can get in there. Um, the amount of worms in here are absolutely incredible to be honest with you, but um, it's, it's almost like you've got an inside wormery with this to be honest. So I'm, I'm just going to level all that off and then uh, just um, put some muck on top of there. Then I'm going to put a little bit of dirt on there, tread it all down and then put another layer of dirt, tread that down and just keep doing that till I've made my way back up to the top. So I'll show you that when I've got it finished. Okay, so there's the bed uh, fully prepared. So I've got it all, all the soil back in. Obviously, that's uh, the grass and the muck and the soil put back on. And as you can see, the level isn't sort of remarkably different. So it just goes to show how um, the grass and the muck is actually compressed underneath. Now there's plenty of worms in there, as you can see. Um, there's literally worms everywhere. This 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 whole bed here is like a massive wormery, to be honest with you. 
Um, and basically what they're going to do is obviously start churning it all up inside anyway as soon as the plants are in. But uh, that's the border ready. So just to quickly recap, we've got a bit of dirt at the bottom, about two inches or so. Then as I've put it in there's about probably six inches of worth of grass which is probably compressed down. Probably looking by the level there, probably down to about three inches. And then there's a couple of three inches of chicken muck and then the dirt on top. And all of that's been sort of completely walked down and uh, compressed and everything. Obviously these boards will now come out of the way. And um, they were just there just to protect the glass a little bit whilst I was moving the, uh, the soil about. So the next steps are basically to put in the canes where I want the, uh, the tomato plants to go. Um, and the um, uh, cucumber plants at the back and then plant the tomatoes and then away we go for another year. So that's uh, preparing the beds. Next I'll show you um, putting the canes in, supporting them and uh, planting the tomato plants. Okay so you can see the difference it's made, the uh, condensation on the windows. Oh, I've not opened up the greenhouse yet today but you can just see in here uh, it's a good uh, it's actually 26 degrees in here and it's only uh, early in the morning so the, the, the amount of heat which is being given off this this ground, um, you have to take my word for it, but that's, that feels like um, it's a good 24 degrees so the actual ground itself is uh, really warm. So that's basically the all of the bacteria in the, in the grass and everything under there is sort of breaking down, giving off heat and that's warming up the bed. Um, so that's why they're basically called Victorian hotbeds. So what I'm going to be doing today is um, putting all the cucumbers in and the uh, the tomatoes in. So I'll show you doing that now. Okay, so the, the first thing we're going to do is put the, uh, the cucumbers in at the back. And as you know, we've got six of these. The, uh, the breed of these are cucumber F1 female, which I've shown you in the past. Now, the things with cucumbers is you always tend to get some sort of roots coming out at the top there. But I would strongly recommend you, uh, you're not tempted to plant them any deeper than they are on the pot. Cucumbers have got a real habit of damping off, and if you um, if you sort of plant them any sort of deeper than they are, they will they will you know most certainly damp off if you're not careful. So what I've done is I've put in the um, sticks so they're about sort of three inches from the back, and they're coming up. I've got some old um, garden hose here connecting the two together exactly like I had last year, and then I've got this pole coming up here. Now with, with cucumbers, typically they will grow something like 10 foot high when they finish. So the, basically the cucumbers are going to grow up here, up the roof, and then they'll typically run along the roof um, after that. So, the first thing you need to do, obviously, is put the poles in. And I've wiped all of these poles down. These are the same ones I used last year. So I've wiped all of these poles down and all of these pipes down uh, with some jace fluid in a little bit of water. And basically what you need to do then is dig the hole as close to the pole as you can possibly get it. Like that, and what you want to be doing is burying the burying the um, cucumber plant, or not burying it, planting it as close to the pole as you can possibly get it. Now, if you look at that, that's obviously the shortest distance from the edges there, so that's the way around I'm going to place it. So, as you can see, there's a nice root system on there. The hole needs to be slightly deeper than that, and it's quite important you get the depth of the um, depth of the hole just right. Got a bit of stick in there, so that's about right now. So I'm just going to place that in now gently, and just make sure that it's the right height. Now, obviously, you don't want to be up earthing these at any point, so it's 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 best that you take your time and get this right first time. So that's in now, and I've just firmed the ground down a little bit. So all I'm going to do now is I don't need to tie these up yet. I've, um, the first sort of tied to the post will be somewhere around here but what I will be doing is uh, just putting a little bit of string on here ready to tie it in because as soon as the tomatoes are in front of it it's going to be a little bit more difficult to um, you know sort of the, uh, to tie the, uh, the string onto the, uh, the poles and it's always best that when you plant in a greenhouse like I'm doing here start at the back and work your way forward don't put the plants in at the front and then obviously try and lean over them to do the back so all we need to do is get some string and uh, my knife and basically what I'm going to be doing is just basically you need around sort of nine inches of string like this don't be tempted to use the string that you used last year cut that off from the poles and discard it most certainly if you've had blight in the greenhouse so this is what I was explaining basically what you want to do is the first one's going to be probably about um, 14 inches off the ground 
and I'm going to tie it from the back. I'm just going to tie a double reef knot like that, nice and tight, so that won't slip up and down the pole now. And then as soon as that's grown to here, what I'll do then is pull that round and tie that loosely around the cucumber when it's ready. But so that I'm ready for when that gets up to there, I'm going to put the string on now. Obviously the next one will be up here and I'll have a little bit more room to get in for that. But um, typically the second string, depending on how the cucumber grows, may sort of alter its height, so I'll, I'll put them in as and when I'm needed. So I'll now do the other um, five cucumbers in exactly the same way. Okay, so when it comes to putting the, uh, the canes into the um, ground, because you put all of that grass in the bottom, what you need to do is just get yourself a metal bar, this is just a bit of ball thread, um, and what you need to do is sort of push that down through the, through the ground, and just, just, just clear basically a hole for the, uh, for the cane to go through. Now if you try and do this with the cane, you potentially run the risk of um, sort of breaking the cane. Now I'm putting these these canes around um, about 14, 15 inches apart. Now that's a little bit closer than some people do it, but um, because this ground is so um, um, you know full of good and everything like that, you know there's there's more than enough to support the plants, and because I'm uh, watering them on a regular basis as well. I don't need to worry about the water in too much. So I find that growing them this close together does actually help with the, um, you know, supporting each other. And as soon as you've got the, as soon as you've got the holes in there then, what you can do then is, this is where you kind of run out of headroom a little bit in the greenhouse, but you can just about slide in. Uh, now these are six inch poles and these are, um, you can't really see it at the moment, I'll show you in a moment, but it's only about an inch or so off the off the uh, ceiling. So what I've actually done is just cut off um, about two inches or so off each off each of the poles. These are new poles that I bought from Wilco's. Um, uh, because of the, the poles that I had last year were kind of on the last legs anyway. And because I had blight I thought it was better just to get some new poles. But uh, as you can see as soon as you've made the hole um, with, the, with the metal, I'm not saying that they will slide in quite nicely, and that's in nice and firm. So what I'll do is I'll just finish these off now, and I'll um, I'll show you the structure as soon as it's finished. Okay, some really quick hints and tips on um, cutting and, and and sort of using bamboo. If you want to cut a bamboo stick, don't just get a pair of secateurs and go straight through, because what will likely to happen is the uh, the bamboo will split and crack. So what you want to do is get the get the bamboo in the um, secateurs and squeeze slightly, and then rotate the uh, the bamboo cane round. So what you end up with is is you've got like a um, a groove, as you can see that, and then as soon as you've got a groove all the way round. And that groove's gone in, I don't know, um, you know, sort of quite a bit. If you, if you carry on turning it, you'll then end up cutting it off. And what you'll end up with is a nice cut through the, uh, the bamboo and it, and it won't have split. If I just go straight in and do, do that, as you can see, it's then split. So if you want to um, cut bamboo, the best way to do it, I'll just quickly show you again, is basically just put your, put your secateurs on the bamboo and then rotate it round like that till you've got a, um, a slit all the way around the bamboo and then just squeeze and it'll cut off nice and clean. That's the first tip. Second tip, if you're going to put um, new bamboo canes into the ground, um, with, with bamboo it's always the bottom part which will rot first. And what you can do, uh, which I've seen quite a lot, even though I'm, I'm not going to do it today, um, is, is what you can do is actually paint the bottom kind of two foot of the, uh, the bamboo cane with some um, either tar or you can actually paint it with, um, you know, just normal, you know, normal wood paint. You know, obviously prime it first, and then paint it. And basically, what you want to do is the bottom bit there is is, is kind of block that off as best you can. Obviously, there's there's, there's various means and ways of doing that, but um, you know, just by um, painting that, what it will do, that's the bit that's going to be sitting in the ground. And and basically, what that will do is it will stop the uh, the bamboo cane from rotting, and your bamboo canes will last last a lot longer if you do that. The third tip I've got: if you need to put, um, if you need to put some bamboos, um, sort of, you know, sort of across-wise, and obviously these are sort of six-foot lengths of, um, sort of bamboo. 
if you want to extend it so you want to put two pieces together if you get yourself some bits of metal pipe if you haven't got metal pipe um, what you can use is old hose pipe which I've, which I've shown you there but obviously with the metal pipe it'll keep it straight and, and all you need to do then is have a, have a length of the the bamboo without a knot in it because the knot won't go over and then you can just slide the bamboo onto the onto the pipe your next bamboo goes into there and what that will do is it'll it'll hold the two together um, now that's that's a reasonably sort of loose fit and what you need to do is kind of find the find the pieces of bamboo that are a good fit now this one here this is a little bit tighter but if I as I'm as, as I'm putting it in I'm just show you with this pipe here if I Do that, you can be able to see what I'm actually doing. What I'm doing is kind of putting the putting the pipe over over the over the bamboo and just kind of twist it round a little bit, and then you'll find that that'll go on. Now that's you know a nice tight fit now on there. Now if I take that down to a knot like that, it'll actually like that. It'll actually lock on. So that's actually locked onto the uh, the bamboo. Then you can put a, another piece in there and sort of carry on. And that's really nice and tight. That's not going to go anywhere. So if you're trying to connect two pieces of bamboo together, get yourself some bits of metal pipe like that. If you haven't got these, are just pieces of steel pipe. But um, normal plumbing pipe, 15 mil um, copper pipe is ideal for doing that. Plus, obviously, copper pipe won't won't sort of corrode as much as steel. But um, you know, any bits of copper pipe, or anything like that, just lengths like that. Always put them on one side. Because when you're trying to connect uh, pieces of bamboo together, you, you know you can very easily do it. Also, obviously, if a, if a piece of bamboo breaks for some reason, you can attach the two broken pieces together with a um, you, you know a, a piece of copper pipe or whatever, rather than going and buying some more. So that's another good tip. Okay, so that's the structure in place now for the um, tomatoes. Now what I've done is I've gone along the the top, and as you can see, this is all really firmly tied in. Um, I've not tied it to everyone, obviously these, these ones here are the ones that the cucumbers are going to grow up um, but I've tied it into the odd one um, here and there uh, there's the steel pipe as I explained joining them together and the other one steel pipe is there just to, just to join two pieces together um, and the second one is tied in again at the top and obviously it's anchored at the bottom anyway. the reason I've done this is last year I just had the canes coming up and I had a bit of a sort of string affair going along just to hold them in place but what I did have um, if you saw my early videos was there was, there was two or three straw, um, um, tomato plants here that started to fall over when the fruit had formed on it um, the, you know they do tend to get a bit top heavy and uh, they can potentially fall over so um, to prevent that from happening this year and I was going to get some new canes anyway is what I've done is I've cut the canes if I just come in here so you can see I've cut the canes so they're exactly um, an inch off the inch off the glass all, all the way along and then um, I've been able to tie them into these sort of cross members here so there's there's no chance of them kind of falling over anywhere um, the only thing that I was concerned about was watering obviously because I've got to get the watering can in there but um, I had canes in this same position um, sort of last year obviously not going up to the ceiling but um, you know you can get in there with a watering can so uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll be okay so now we've got the structure and what I can do is start to put in the um, tomato plants now Along here, I've got um, 16 um, canes. So, um, and as you can see, they're, they're around sort of 14 inches, um, 15 inches apart all the way along. If you're wondering why there's a, a bit more of a space here between those two um, cucumbers at the back, the reason for that is I didn't want um, a pole interfering with the uh, the window opening mechanism so what I want to be able to do is be able to open that um, and last year for my own mistakes I actually had one of the poles here and so it was a you know it was a bit awkward to do that so I've made sure that this window and also this window here I can get to the mechanism so obviously the the, uh, the poles being tied off just below it and I'll be able to get in and sort of open and close the windows and fasten them down if it's windy. So that's why the cucumbers aren't quite exactly equally spaced along the back but they've all got um, probably about two foot between them um, along there then obviously the tomatoes are slightly closer together um, it's slightly more spaced out towards the end here because uh, what I intend to do is plant the tomatoes on, on this side of each of the, um, the poles uh, reason being is obviously the sun comes up over here and goes round so the tomatoes will be on the sun side of the pole so they'll, they'll sort of grow up this side if you like so that's why they're slightly kind of spaced sort of that way if you like 
Um, so I'll, I'll start to plant the tomatoes now. And what I'm going to do is, obviously I've got two different types of um, tomatoes this year. The, the cherry tomatoes um, are going to go in here, where these, um, where these are here. So the, the two sort of larger plants that I've got, I've got the, um, the money maker. So the money maker are going to go sort of in the back row. And then in the front row, I've got the other variety, which is... Uh... Okay, so when planting tomatoes, so I'm going to be putting in the, um, the money maker at the back here. Alicante is going to go in the front. So all I'm going to do, basically, is dig a hole. Um, and I'm going to get this hole um, as close as I can to the, um, the actual bamboo pole. Now what you can do with tomatoes, uh, which is what quite a few people that I know do, is they actually bury the... Um, they actually bury the tomato plant actually deeper than it um, is in the pot and what you can get is additional roots forming from the side um, which will obviously support the plant even more. Now before you put the plant in this is a good time to start pricking out the um, the you know the sort of the side shoots which are basically the ones that you need to get rid of so as you can see here this is a side branch and uh, for money maker what you want to do is just basically put your nail through that and pull out these side branches here obviously not damaging the leaf um, and then likewise here we've got a little branch forming there and you'll get one of these forming from, from at the top of each of the leaves so you'll either get a, a branch or you'll get a, um, a sort of flower um, as you can see there there's a, there's a little flower starting to form on the top there and that's basically because these have become a little bit pot bound because uh, I'm a slightly later this year than putting them in than I am normally but um, it's just worthwhile whilst you're putting them in just quickly go around and any sort of little branches that you get, see there's one there, just basically pull it off to one side or put your nail through it and then um, sort of take it off. So as soon as you've got those off, basically just need to um, sort of very carefully um, pull, the, pull the pot off um, and basically plant the, plant the tomato in the ground. So it's, um, I always try and plant them slightly deeper than they are in the pot. But I don't sort of plant them deeper so that they'll get the, um, you know, the um, the roots or anything like that. I just plant them slightly deeper than they are in the pot, just to make sure that they're they're well and truly in the ground. So just firm those in, and plant it so that the plant is actually facing towards the, um, you know, the, the the bamboo cane. So just make sure that's nice and firm in. And obviously, as you water them, uh, because this ground's reasonably wet. Um, I'll just give them a little teeny bit of water today but what I will do is at the bottom there I'm just going to tie them off and as I explained with the cucumbers all you need to do is get around nine inches of um, nine inches of um, string and then take the take the string the opposite way to the plant um, and then select between two um, sort of leaf joints if you like and then tie that off with a double reef knot at the back, making sure that's really nice and tight. Now that won't slip up and down the um, the bamboo cane, and then just bring it round to the front. And what I typically do is take it back round again like that, so I end up with two loops round the plant. I don't know if you can see that, um, and then just tie it again at the back loosely with two reef knots, so it's not tight round the plant. Um, it's just sort of tight on itself if you like like that so as you can see the string is loose round the, um, the tomato plant and as the plant develops the stalk will get slightly thicker anyway so you want a bit of kind of give in there so you want you know so it's nice and loose and then that'll be okay for that one for a little bit and then obviously when it grows another sort of nine inches or so what I will tend to do then is then tie it under each of the fruit trusses so you, as you can see that's the first fruit, uh, fruit truss there so that one will probably be okay. The next one, as that comes out, what I'll do is um, tie it underneath so that when the tomatoes form, it'll support the weight of the tomatoes. So, thank you for watching this episode of Jim's Lot McGarden. I hope it was of some use to you. Please don't hesitate to put any comments you've got below and I'll always get back to you. And I'll see you on the next episode of Jim's Lot McGarden.